A World Cup season consists of six opportunities for victory. Win once, you're lucky. Ah, oh, Loris Vergier wins, Maribor! Twice, you're good. Luan Lecomte wins and goes two for two. Three times. It's a hat-trick of cross-country Olympic wins. Mate, you've got a system. A symmetrical risk. A calculated gamble where potential returns surpass the downside. So basically, the idea that you have more to win than you do to lose. Exactly. And at this stage of her career, the beauty of being Luana Lecomte is that it's all upside. She gets to race like she's got nothing to lose and everything to prove. Euh, bonjour, je m'appelle Loana Lecomte, euh, je roule pour l'équipe euh, Massy et je suis euh, leader euh, de la Coupe du Monde euh, 2021. For Loana Lecomte, amazing result, amazing ride, can hardly believe it, she's done it again in 2021. Quand j'ai gagné la première, enfin j'étais pas prête à ça, j'ai gagné la deuxième, après c'est, on se pose toujours la question de peut-être que je suis prête un petit peu trop tôt, que les autres elles se préparent pour les Jeux. Puis au final, j'ai continué à gagner les deux autres manches. The perfect season continues in cross country Olympic for this woman. Luana had just such an incredible, like, strong season, and like, she's just absolutely smashed it. It's incredible. Dans une carrière en quelque sorte, je sais qu'il y a aussi des bas, donc il va falloir aussi apprendre à gérer ces moments-là. You see, when like one athlete is on fire, they really kind of can't wait to get to the next start line and. When you're not in that place, it's tough to race week after week, knowing that maybe you're not quite uh, where you want to be form-wise. Struggling a little bit for form this year, but fair to say for Kate Courtney. When I talk to athletes that are a bit further along in their career, everyone can point to a moment where this similar thing happened to them. Either they had an off season or an off year. Of course, when it happens to you, you're like, this was not in the plans. It's something you have to kind of manage and learn. And I think I'm learning a lot about that this year. It's our last stop in Europe and the penultimate stop of this year's Mercedes-Benz UCI Cross Country World Cup. Lenza Haider here in the very east of the country. I think race strategy is definitely race dependent. Um, it depends on the course that you're on, on the day, and then also definitely on your fitness. I'm super excited for here. It's like, obviously it's quite um, a lot of attention after world champs. We present you with a list of winning cross-country race strategies in ascending order of difficulty. Option one, ride with restraint, pass with authority. Option two, surge early, surge often. And option three, set a high enough pace to simply ride everyone else off your wheel. And we are underway then in Switzerland. And Luana Lecomte with a real opportunity today to take this overall title for the first time in the elite category. Kate Corney went through inside the top 10 there. I've never had strategies before. Like, when I was like U23, it's just like, ride off. I want to get away from everyone and then just see who dies, even if it's me. It's like, see who blows. God, a mistake there from Luana. Look at that. So under pressure, perhaps, but I don't know. Richard's doing the damage at the front. I somehow always have a little bit of a feeling about how the race will go. And it doesn't really matter if it's a positive or a negative feeling. It's just there. And it's quite annoying because usually I'm right. So maybe you can say that the racing is the consequence of my feeling. This is going to be interesting to see how Lecomte responds to this today because we haven't seen her in this position in any World Cup race this year. When we roll in a group, we are obliged to subir the rhythm of the other. But après aussi, ben, on peut faire subir aussi notre rythme aux autres. Even within the race, I'm not thinking about, oh, Luan is just going to ride off. It's like I'm riding my own race. So Richard's driving the pace on this climb, paying absolute dividends. Can anyone come back to her now, Bart? Si tu commences à te dire, ouais, si je vais peut-être gagner, je vais peut-être gagner. Enfin, c'est superstitieux. Je dis à tout moment, il m'arrive euh, une casse mécanique, une chute, et c'est fini. Oh, 
Oh, no way! Flat tire for Fry on the turn, please. The Cobbs goes by as well. Here's Kate Courtney, looking good again, Bart. Great to see. Luan Lacoste, one lap away from becoming the elite cross-country World Cup overall winner for the first time. So Evie Richards, what a couple of weekends this woman has had, becoming the world champion a week ago. And now Evie Richards comes up the line to take her first elite cross-country win. And here comes Luan Lacoste, then your new overall World Cup winner for 2021. She takes the title here today. It's so interesting to me to watch Luana uh, because I feel like I had kind of a similar season in 2019 and it's like the same thing they were saying about me is the thing they say about her and it's like she's never gonna lose again and then it's like anything you do is a disappointment. Like she's already accomplished more in a year than many people accomplish in their entire careers. Game recognizes game. And if you're chasing status on the UCI World Cup, you're required to suffer one of two things. The pain of preparation or the pain of regret. J'ai laissé le même rebond. OK. Je saurais pas dire. Peut-être là ça ralentit un clic. Ouais, peut-être. Before I start on the suspensions, I have to say like I owe a lot of my success with that point to my mechanic because I have no background, still don't feel like I know much about it. Bike suspension is like, it's the most pain in the ass thing to deal with. It's like this weird sort of, as you grow up, you start to understand the process more. And I think that's a lot of it. So like when I first came into, I was like, I'm, I'm sure I could understand a little bit about the bike, but I was like, like, I don't know, I'm just riding it. It's interesting, like when we first start working with riders, there's very few of them that are good at it right off the bat. And I think so many of them are looking for something when all you want is for them to ride their bike. As I continue to get older now, it's like on the bike, I'll write down like notes and then I'll be like, the spring rate was too high. We need to go down to like, like a 491, but then increase the hydraulics of the shock. We can sort of come up with different settings that work better for each different track. For sure, when you start a weekend, you have a base setup depending on the type of track you're riding. So steep, flat, rough, fast, whatever. The more you'll get to up to speed, the more you'll have to have a stiff bike. As the track changes, holes get bigger, people go faster. I mean, that's the nature of the sport. It's terrifying for me because I feel like if I make a mistake, I'm responsible for their race. So I put a lot of pressure on myself. Okay, well, the number one plate leaves the star hut at pace. Thibaut de Preller on track. Oh, pushing hard down here. Oh, the front wheel getting a little offline there. He's full speed. There's no chill on this guy. Ah, he goes down hard. The front wheel folded. Oh, my goodness. And he's up to his feet. Thank goodness. And what does that do to the overall this year? What does that do to it? Yes, Rob, what does this do to the overall? Before the aforementioned wheel implosion, Thibaut Aprila needed a simple 265 points to lock in the title. A DNF complicates matters. But the first of our French frontrunners can still claim overall victory if he wins the final race. For Loris Vergier, the best case scenario is to win today, then win the last race scoring a full 450 points and locking in the title. Improbable, but not impossible. Enter the third baguette of the bunch, Loic Bruni. For him to take the title will require a combo of maximum points, along with a serious intervention from the gods of chance. Loic Bruni then on track now, the four-time world champion, and he's on fast. It splits one, two, and three in qualifying. Like when you ride finals, your bike, if you take it the day after to another track, you'll be like, what the f is this shit? But then it goes so fast and you push so much that everything is perfect. Half a second into the green now then. So Bruni flying down here through this rock section. 
And Bruni, is he going to be great still? Then look at the crowd in his face. Gives it absolutely everything. Point three up then. Coming his way as well. Look at it, powering down to the line. Bruni goes fastest, 310. Half a second into the green. So the time comes down again. Would that be good enough for the win today? And now it's the 2020 world champion, Reese Wilson, eighth in qualified. I was actually thinking about how tight everything is and about how out of control it is. You're going everything perfect and then you might be faster, point one here, slower, point two here. All right, he's up by over a second. Wow, well, look at this from Reese Wilson. Bruni's time is in jeopardy then. It's like a balance of every section that brings everybody almost at the same time at the finish. So it's pretty crazy how everything goes down to the finish line. Oh my goodness! How did Reese Wilson pull back that time? That's unreal. Reese Wilson back on top. 32 thousandths of a second, which is pretty much invisible, but it is, and it feels. Will it be Reese Wilson or will it be the last man at the top, the fastest qualifier? Looking nervous playing with those goggles. Of course he is. Finn Isles then, the Canadian specialised gravity rider, fastest in the technical sections in that qualifier. He's in touch. Oh my goodness! 0.34 then! So Reese Wilson is good, his rider looking nervous. Oh, this is going to be tight, this one then. So Finn Isles. wins his first ever World Cup. We fought pretty hard and we're still fighting and it's not over. So when I look at the overall and when I, it's not too bad. Here's the thing. A World Cup overall title is attracted to energy and action. But it also favors those who can isolate outcome from emotion with a title still on the line. Being nonchalant is serious business.